What search for the truth? And once you identify the truth, it is incumbent upon you to accept it. You're not simply living this life with your eyes closed. Do you have thinking faculties? Yes. Do you have a heart that has emotions and you seek good things? Yes. So God has said to you, I've given you this life, do something with it, and that doing is to find Him, believe in Him, and obey Him. Yeah. That's our belief as Muslims. What do you say about this? Talk about a Christian who believes passionately about his or her God, a Hindu who believes passionately about her God, and worship with all this passion, this passion is misplaced. Just imagine someone, instead of considering you as the one who's done everything and that gives thanks and glory to someone else, it's called misplacement. It's totally misplacement. So God wants us to worship Him rather than giving that worship to a tree or a monkey or a banana or a black human being or a white human being or, or, or an elephant, whatever it might be. Because He says, okay, you need to rightly direct that worship to the one who deserves the worship. So we have been given the faculty of intellect. Those people who are incapacitated, meaning not able to use their intellect, the rational faculty, they are not accountable. No. So if you have someone who's totally insane, God's not going to put them in hellfire because that would be unjust. But those who are able to distinguish between right and wrong, truth and falsehood, they will be accountable and they have to use their brains, their intellect, to arrive at the right concept of God, at the right way of worshipping God. So not simply by saying, you know what, my heart feels this man who died on the cross, he must be very kind and generous, I, I should worship him. But they have to ask themselves, is he worthy of worship? Just because you sacrifice your own life to save me or a whole nation, it doesn't make you worthy of worship. It just tells you that you are a very good, kind, generous person and compassionate person. The one who is worthy of worship should be the one who created us, gave us life, the one who is control over everything, the one who is has, has the dominion, the one who will resurrect us, the one who will give us the, the, the reward of paradise or the punishment of alpha, not a created human being or anything of the creation. So if a, if a Christian worships with all that passion, that would not be accepted because what we have done is something called you have taken away the right of God and given it to someone else. You see, we all have right against over each other. Like, you have a right over me in the sense that I should not mock you, insult you, ridicule you, rob you, cheat you, murder you, whatever, and all those things. Because I have no right to do any of that. The whole idea of freedom of speech and whatever, Muslims, we don't say that this is something that we can just do in blanket. You might feel that you have the freedom, but you don't have the right Islamically to insult anyone. To slander. To, to slander, malicious. to mock, to ridicule. And how, how do you draw the line of what's uh, This is where the guidance of God comes in. Yes. God gives you the boundary of guidance and tells you this is what is allowed and this is the amount you can go. Right? So we don't make up the boundary. God has clearly and explicitly established those guidelines for us. You'll be surprised when the Quran says, Tilka hududullah la ta'fadduha, something like this. These are the boundaries of God. Do not cross those boundaries. Because God is the one giving us yes. the boundary of how to contain and maintain our life. So if we used our intellect, we would have known any human being, doesn't matter how compassionate they are, they're not worthy of worship because they would not be self-sufficient. They would not be independent. They would not be someone who is absolute in their character because God is perfect and absolute. Everyone else is deficient. We are deficient. So for example, God is all powerful you and I are not all powerful. Christ Jesus, even if he died on the cross, he suffered. If something is all powerful, can they suffer? Suffering means that you're weak. Suffering means that you don't control the person who is harming you. Can God have deficiencies or weaknesses? No, because he's perfect. Can God be ignorant? Can he not know something? No, because he's all knowing. So for us, anything which is deficient in any way cannot be God. Does that seem logical? That to makes you? sense. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Where are you going? I don't. I don't know enough about. So Islam. when we talk about Jesus Christ in this context, in this context, 
if we die in the state of submitting and surrendering God, what we say as Islam, then God has promised us, promised us that we will go to heaven, to paradise, to Jannah. So the, the reason I talked about Jesus, because many people find like, oh, because of this dying and crucifying is, you know, that's for that religion, right? That's for the religion. But we know that Jesus Christ didn't know everything according to his own admissions. He, says, he, said, Lord Lord. he is the way that he can lie. Okay, did he say of that hour and of that day, no one knows, no human beings. Can I finish this verse from the Bible? And not even the angels, but the Father. So if he exclude himself to know when the world, the world is going to come to an end. flesh. He yeah. conquered them. Did he, he know everything? The way the truth. Did he know everything? He's the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Sure, sure, he sure. Conquered them. Did he know everything? Yes, he is God. I don't know enough okay. about Christianity. No. And anyway, yeah. anyway, um, I asked you. I mean, you're not really addressing the if question. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He is the way the truth lies. If you see me, you see the and president. Security and salvation. What does it mean? Do you see me or do you see the I'm president? I'm the president, right? In that case. Yeah. Anyways. There are lots of arguments our Christian friends, brothers and sisters in humanity will bring on the table. We can address them and examine them in terms of their coherence, whether they make sense or not. So the examples that we heard that, oh, Jesus said, you haven't seen me, you have seen the Father. Um, really? Who did they see? Who did, did they see Jesus at all? Did they see the Father? Because the Father, according to them, says, you can't see me. In fact, if you study the Old Testament, Prophet Moses, he wanted to see God upon him with this. God says, you can't see me. Not in this world. And then, of course, Quran describes the incidents, of course, in more clarity and more, uh, what is called, um, 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 less ambiguous terms, exactly giving you the, the, the details. Saying, he says, I want, to, I want to see God. He says, Lantarani, you won't be able to see me. But if you see the mountain still stand, perhaps you can see me. So when God reveals some of his glory to the mountain, the mountain crumbled to dust. Moses fainted and then when he woke up, he realized no, he's not even worthy. He says, okay, no, you know, forgive me for what I've even said. Because he realized that you do not have in this world to to see God because you're not equipped to see God in this world. I mean, can you stare at a bright sun in, 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 a, in a very clear day for 10 minutes? You won't be able to. Your eyes will get damaged. Not for right? 10 seconds. This sun is nothing compared to so many other stars in our galaxies or other galaxies. And God is the creator of these weak stars. And his, his, his glory, his majesty, his sovereignty, his power exists far, far from this miniature creation that he has. And yet we want to see God. I mean, can a bacteria comprehend how I look like? We are a speck, speck on this planet Earth. The planet Earth is a speck on our solar system, which is a speck on our Milky Way galaxy. And we want to see God. I mean, that's why Quran says vision cannot comprehend it. But he comprehends all vision. Yeah? We have a question from this. Where do you stand with your belief? does not exist. You were uncertain about it earlier. Where do you stand? I think, I was, yeah, I still, um, I've always been pretty convinced that God exists, to be okay. honest. Yeah. And you? Still, I, still uncertainty, but you've definitely opened me up to look into... Let's, let's take some of the steps. Something always has to exist, right? Yes. Because nothing yeah, cannot bring yeah, something. something that yes. something, the, there are some essential qualities that something must have. And I'll tell you why. It's something that exists by itself without being brought into existence. So it's, it, it, it has self-existence. Yes. Meaning it's existence, it's not dependent on something else. So if you exist, then you would have certain qualities of existence while existing. What we see in this world now, we see transformation. Things transform from one to the other. Without this something that existed always, without possessing a will and self-awareness, no transformation will happen. Can I give you an example? Do you drink 
tea, coffee, milk, whatever, right? You do? Yes. Imagine you go into your kitchen and you have all of that available. So you want to make tea, two sugars, right? Yeah. Your tea is in a, in the cupboard, which is, you have to open the door. Yes. The milk is in the fridge. Yes. The water is in the tap. Yes. Right? Yeah? There is, there is a cooker which will needs lighting to get the fire, to bring the kettle in by putting the water, right? All of that. If you sit there, if you sit there and wait for a cup of tea, would it, would it ever happen in front of you, a good cup of tea with two sugars, just because you sit there and you think things will happen by itself? Yes, no, you have to make it. You need a willing agent to make it. Yes. Whether you programmed a robot to do that for you, or a human being like yourself. You can sit there for millions and zillions of years. These things would not self-assemble yes. and get come together and make a team. Yes. This universe, with all this transformation, in all this different organization and complexities, and yet how harmonious organization. You are put together in a particular harmony. Your heart, when they were developing as cells, they started aggregating to that place to form the heart tissue. They didn't make the liver. They all were exactly programmed to go where they're supposed to go. This kind of transformation and assembly, which is so organized, cannot come by itself, by just, or it just happens. You need a willing agent to do that. Yeah. That something must possess will and self-awareness, and must possess power, and must possess knowledge, yeah. because that's what we see. That something is now your originator, who, is, who has a will, who is self-awareness, and who has power and knowledge, and his power would not be limited, his knowledge would not be limited, and there cannot be more than one of those things, because yeah. otherwise there's a conflict of will. We already have come to a conclusion of a creator, originator, sometimes creator things like, oh, I don't believe in a creator, originator, transformer of all of those things, yes. who is absolute and not deficient. Yeah. So it's not something that is difficult for us to come to the realization by rational faculty of ours, intellectual reasoning, that this there is a creator, and this creator is one. This creator has willed us into existence. Next question will be, why are we created? For a purpose. And once you know the purpose by looking at what this creator has communicated to us in the form of communication through certain agents, which we call prophets and messengers, yes. communication in the form of scriptures, religion makes now sense that yes. there is a God. Because when we say God, we are saying this agent is worthy of our gratitude, worthy of our to be grateful, to be thankful, is worthy of having that. If you saved me from an accident, I should be thanking you, right? Yes, definitely. If God gives you life and gives you all the things in your faculties, right? Sustained life, should you not be grateful and should you not be thankful? Yes, That's no, what definitely. the essence of worship is. Yes. To thank God, to glorify God, to praise God, to, to submit to His will. Yes. So, if you're convinced because of it is something that other people believe, so now you can be convinced that it makes sense to believe, that it is reasonable to believe. It is something that our heart and our mind can accept that it is the truth. So this is what we say, that is the belief that we should arrive at, and this originator, we say he is Allah. In Arabic, he has all the beautiful names of perfection, the most merciful, the most kind, the most loving, the one who is just, the one who is the only, the first and the last. You will see a lot of these names described of our Creator to know Him. Because remember, once you know that there is something that is always there and he's, He created us, He is one with a will and created us for a purpose, you would want to know more about Him. You would not be able to know about this being just by speculation because we are finite individuals. We have a limit of how much we know. Do you agree, Sofa? Yes. 
Yes. The only way we can be certain and sure is when our creator, originator, informs us, then we are no longer into this, any speculation mode. We will be certain in what he is and who he is. So we can ask you, well and well, to look into the Quran, which we say is a final revelation, a final guidance from God, final book from God, yeah. and look into the life of Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, the final messenger from God, Prophet Muhammad, so that you can see where the will of God is. Because you want to live according to the will of God. Because you want to submit to this will of God to fulfill the, the reason why you're created for. Rather than just simply to be happy and go for momentary happiness of, you know, drinking, womanizing, drugging and whatever like makes you happy. People go for this momentary happiness, right? Some people are happy with drugs and rock and roll and women and sex and whatever, right? But they don't last. You want everlasting happiness, which is the hereafter, where we provide it. Not this 120 years or 30 years of your life. It will just go. We will die. But if we do not fulfill our purpose, we would not go to the place of happiness, eternal happiness. We will, we, would, we may even end up going to a place of torment and torture. We don't want to do that, so we have to avoid being punished by looking at what we're supposed to do, what we're supposed to follow. And this is what is enshrined in the guidance of God in the Quran and in the example of Prophet Muhammad So I humbly request you, being two you know, you know, very smart and intelligent individuals, look into Islam. If it makes sense, embrace it. If it doesn't make sense yet, ask questions and ask Muslims, can you explain that to me? Once you realize this is the truth, accept it. Because the truth is what is going to make you free. Free from being enslaved to worshipping your desires, worshipping the culture, worshipping celebrities and pop stars, worshipping a nation or a flag. It will free you from this enslavement and you will be worshipping the one who deserves our worship. Is that reasonable? Yes, very reasonable. Let's leave it Definitely to that. It's getting cold, I can feel, yes, feel that. Freezing. All the best, take Thank care, um, my Thank friends you. will and will, but research more. Thank you. Yeah? Beautiful. Okay, you take care. Thank you. you okay. Pleasure speaking to you, brother. You too, very take nice care. to meet you. You too. Thank you.